Hi there, I'm Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. I'm here every Monday, 4.30pm, to talk about the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And while they may never meet um, in the ring, although, you know, hopefully we, we keep all that, everything crossed, it does happen. We did see uh, Vasily Lomachenko and Javante Tank Davis go up against each other in a manner of speaking this weekend as both appeared. Uh, in their latest outings, uh, Lomachenko on ESPN, obviously with Top Rank, and Javante Davis on PBC uh, on pay-per-view uh, for the second fight in a row. And they both came through, both inside the distance, although very, very different uh, types of fights, it's fair to say. Davis arguably had the tougher challenge, although his opponent, Mario Barrios, you might say levels-wise, isn't too far away from uh, Nakatani, who Lomachenko fought. Tank was stepping up two weight classes, up at £140 for the first time. And going up against an unbeaten opponent, although many believe uh, Barrios should have lost his fight with Akhmadov, uh, where he picked up the WBA regular title. He was unbeaten, he was confident. And um, gave a really good account of himself, actually. I think most people expected Tank to find it a bit easier than he did, despite the step up in weight and the significant disadvantages in terms of height and reach. Um, but Barrios started really well behind a very, very good long jab. Davis eventually adjusted, um, parried the jab, got around it, and started to land his explosive combinations. But the fight was still very much in the balance before uh, the pivotal point in the 11th round. And that was despite Davis scoring two knockdowns in round eight, um, but couldn't try in vain to finish uh, Barrios off, but couldn't do it. And then Barrios actually came back strongly, particularly with his body attack in the championship rounds. And it looked like he was really gaining a foothold. And uh, Davis said after the fight that, because Floyd Mayweather was seen coming to speak to Davis in between rounds a couple of times, he was asked what he was being told. And he told uh, Mayweather apparently told Davis that he was down on the scorecards and um, he said, show me you can be great. And uh, Davis did that with a, a great 11th round stoppage, lovely hook, counter hook uh, to put Barrios down and then a follow up flurry that caused the referee to rightly step in in round 11. But interestingly enough, with those two knockdowns from round eight in the bag, uh, Davis was ahead at the time of the stoppage uh, significantly on one scorecard. And a bit close off, it was four points on the other two. So even taking away the knockdowns, he would have been in the lead on all three scorecards. So Floyd Mayweather, excellent boxer, perhaps not the best judge of a fight, unless he was just saying it to motivate his charge, in which case it worked uh, because Davis listened to his mentor and delivered for the second fight in a row after that highlight reel knockout of Leo Santa Cruz. Another memorable finish. Um, and we'll wait, we'll wait to see reports of how uh, the fight performed on pay-per-view. But it's his second pay-per-view headline uh, appearance in a row. And if it does well, he's only going to get a bigger star. The only disappointing thing is that after the fight, Mayweather was saying he's gonna, he plans to keep Davis in-house, if you like, fighting other PBC fighters between 130 and 140 pounds. Um, he said, you know, there's no sense in building up fighters for them to make someone else's show great. Which I understand from a business point of view, but from a boxing fan's point of view, it's not the greatest thing you want to hear after an exciting fight and a, a you know a, a landmark finish from Davis. You know, really, we'd like to see him against Lomachenko, but Lomachenko, and we'll talk about his performance in a minute, wants to get in once again with the second man to defeat him as a professional, Teofimo Lopez. Um, wants the rematch. Lopez obviously has got to deal with his mandatory uh, challenger, George Cambosos. That was. Delayed that fight, or has been delayed a couple of times actually. First of all, after Lopez, or actually no, second of all, after Lopez contracted COVID. Uh, but we hope that all that will get on in the next month or two. If it does, Lomachenko mentioned in his post-fight interview he'd like the Lopez rematch either at the end of the year, kind of December, or maybe early in 2022. Uh, but Teofimo Lopez Senior, who was ringside. For Lomachenko against Nakatani, he said that after the Cambosos fight, he was more than willing to grant Lomachenko that rematch. Now, a lot of people said uh, after Vasily's ninth round victory that he looked like the Lomachenko of old. Um, and it was a very, very good performance. 
Um, and he was certainly more aggressive, more proactive um, than he was in the first six rounds or so against Lopez in what was a desultory performance, um, it has to be said. And I know he blames an injury he suffered early in the fight. Maybe that's true. Uh, but I think a lot of it is also to do with Lopez and what he allowed Lomachenko to do. You know, Lopez was very aggressive in his own right. He controlled the distance and the tempo of the fight from the centre of the ring. And that's something Nakatani was never really able to do. From the opening rounds, Nakatani is obviously very tall, very lean, uh, long arms. From the start, Lomachenko just stayed in the pocket, bided his time, moved his head, and was able, at ease really, to slip inside and outside the jab of Nakatani. Slipping outside, getting his uh, lead foot on the outside of his opponent's lead foot, he was able to counter at an angle. And then when he slipped inside, that was even more effective because he slipped inside with that right foot and then landed a lead straight left hand from the southpaw stance over and over again. Nakatani, good fighter, came off a, a good win over Felix Verdejo. Um, but we've seen him beaten by Lopez before, albeit not as uh, not, not in such a dominant fashion as Lomachenko was able to achieve. I think Lomachenko in total got three knockdowns. Um, and the, I have to say as well, the stoppage in round nine by Celestino Ruiz, the referee, was about as perfectly timed a stoppage as you will see. Um, just exactly the right moment to step in as uh, Nekatani was all at sea, but not a couple of punches too late. So yeah, great stoppage. But yeah, so Nakatani, very upright, um, left hand low. Um, so he was backing off in straight lines when Lomachenko attacked. Now, obviously, Lomachenko is very fast, very agile, pushes the pace. Anyone would have found it difficult in the form that he was in, the Ukrainian was in on uh, Saturday night. But Nakatani didn't do himself any favours, A, by stepping back directly instead of going back at an angle. Um, by keeping his left hand low, by staying very upright, didn't really tuck his chin or keep his gloves up around his chin. But also, he rarely threw more than a single jab. He rarely threw the jab, double jabs or triple jabs. It was always single jab and he poured it quite a lot as well. Fainted with it, but fainted with it at half extension. So just left himself open to quick counters. Nakatani's tall and long, but he's not the quickest. And Lomachenko is always going to have the speed advantage. If you combine that with the you know, long torso and open defences. You know, it was a field day. He, he was an opponent that made Lomachenko look incredibly good. Um, and I don't think necessarily that may have been the Lomachenko of old. I'm not saying he slipped at all, but we won't know that until he goes in with someone who stylistically and in terms of levels is, you know, one of the guys we saw when Lomachenko was doing so well previously. You know, he was stopping guys like Jorge Linares, who was back in really good form at the time. Um, even, even against Lopez, it was a close fight by the end. We need to see Lomachenko tested to know exactly what's left in the tank. And hopefully, no pun intended on Javante, uh, hopefully we will see that in the Lopez rematch should Lopez get through Cambosos first, of course. But yeah, two very different performances. Tanks may be more memorable because the fight itself was more memorable, more competitive. But Lomachenko certainly looked dominant, uh, aggressive, hard-hitting, and uh, just just determined, determined to put on a show, determined to make a statement and to remind people that he's still very much a factor at lightweight. I think everyone said even if he'd beaten Lopez, the plan was to go back down in weight. Well, that didn't happen. I think losing to Lopez has maybe stuck in his craw. He's decided to stay up at uh, 135 pounds, waiting for that rematch. And uh, that's what we, we were reminded a lot on the Sky commentary in the UK as well, that he could probably still make featherweight and he's daring to be great, if you like, echoing what Floyd Mayweather apparently advised Tank to do. He's daring to be great by staying in a weight class that really isn't natural for him and going up against bigger, stronger, harder hitting opponents. And for the most part, winning, um, at least until he knocked into Teofimo Lopez. As for Tank... Same thing, he's going up to £140 when presumably he can still make at least 135 if not 130 still. You know, it wasn't that long ago he made 130 So, you know, both of them daring to be great. But really, I'd like to see them against each other. Um, and I know, very, very unlikely, opposite ends of the street uh, in common boxing parlance. But I'd like to see them get it on. 
I think Styles would mesh fantastically actually in that one. Um, and I think we'd, we'd, I think they'd bring the best out of each other. Now let me know what you guys think. Uh, whose performance impressed you more, Tank or uh, Vasily Lomachenko? Uh, what would you like to see happen next for both men? And if they were to fight, who would come out on top? Let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you guys uh, when I can. I'll be back on Monday for, sorry, no, on Thursday for Flexpectations, 4.30pm and the following Monday for the next Reflections at the same time. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.